All right, welcome to the Cage Volume Project. So I'm going to go through this uh, quick slideshow here, kind of go over the project. So uh, Cage Volume Drawing is the focus of this, this uh, search section. And um, it works off the idea of contour drawing. So a reminder, contour drawing explores mass and volume by focusing on the outline, right? So you just kind of focus on the outline of the drawing and you have the curve kind of go inside these little edges and these little areas to define some of the forms to divide mass. Here's another one, a uh, great drawing by uh, Egon Schiele, very cool German expressionist artist, uh, especially his hands. He's sort of known for his handwork in uh, his drawings. Uh, but cage volumes, they differ in the sense that they are three-dimensional contour lines. The cage volumes actually wrap around the form, revealing the interior of the subject. So that's a real indicator here. You can see with these uh, real these hand drawings here, how you can kind of see the inside of the hands, and you can see some of the interior, and you can definitely see how the lines are all wrapping around in um, some areas of the hands, not necessarily every part, but a lot of it. A contemporary way of thinking about this are these uh, cutaway drawings that are done in illustrations, where you can actually see through. The idea of cage volumes kind of imagine the object being sort of transparent, where you can draw around it. Um, here's some more contemporary sort of cutaways, illustrations that have that. Here is uh, uh, the famous piece by da Vinci, the Vertuvi Vertuvian Man. And you can see here the overlap of the arms in the perspective here of sort of the circle, the uh, proportions of the man here. And you can see how there's this overlap. This overlap is what's creating the cage sort of quality. So same in the leg right here, it's happening here. Uh, in his illustration or drawings of uh, human anatomy, he often did that with the opening of the uh, skull here. Um, a lot of his skeletal work and anatomy drawings have a little bit of cage volume action going on in them. Here's some uh, beautiful studies, again, by da Vinci. And you can really sense uh, form and 3D in all his objects, even his inventions like the giant crossbow here. As animal studies, you'll definitely see overlapping you can see where the lines are kind of being a little more exploratory in terms of defining the leg here uh, here you can back leg, you can really see some movement some suggested movement of happening michelangelo is another renaissance artist that used cage volume quite a bit you can see how you're seeing the side of the rib cage here but you're also seeing the back at the same time and the rib cage really wraps around you wouldn't be able to quite see exactly that amount of it and a real person. So it's it, the idea here is that you see, you draw what you know to be true, but also, uh, or you draw what you see, but what also you know to be true in essence. So you allow the lines to actually curve around the form. Here you can see the the painting. It, basically, you're missing some of those little areas, uh, but he showed that anatomy structure in there because he was interested in how that would work for the painting. Um, same in here, you can see sort of the wrapping of the all different lines and legs here. So it's not necessarily in every aspect of the drawing, the cage volume, but there's a lot of it in here. Rembrandt uh, also did this. Uh, you can see it in the head here, the sort of structure here. Um, a lot of his, his figures had a very cage-like structure that you could really see inside the form of the, the actual uh, people. Really great little ink drawing here. Some of these are done very, very quickly. You can tell by uh, the type of marks that are created here. But all of these have some essence of the cage volume in them. Can I go through some of these a little faster here? Uh, you can check these out on your own. Um, Rico Lebrun is an a artist who uh, used cage volume a lot and um, taught it to different people. And uh, he did this series called Dante's Inferno. Uh, which was uh, based on Dante's uh, Inferno book and uh, series. They have the three of them. And here's the uh, sort of different layers of hell, basically, with the figures. You can see all the different wrapping that's going on, the way that lines are curving around and creating the form. Even in these um, other structured, sort of blocky structure of figures, you know, being tormented, they, they have that sort of feeling of being wrapped around. And these areas here, you know, they become sort of animalistic or, you know, creature like. Here's a little link. I'm not going to play it, but you can watch on your own to see more of Rico Lebrun's work. 
And Le Breton taught Warshaw how this technique of uh, cage volume. So uh, you can see it in his work too, especially in this figure here, where these lines to wrap around. Um, and in the hand here, he did these uh, hand studies all the time that had the cage volume and the figure. And he taught uh, John Nava. And uh, John Nava is a contemporary artist who's uh, pretty well known in the barrier area. Um, and he actually uh, was a student of Warshaw. And so was this uh, person, Bob Nugent. He was a student of Howard Warshaw. So these are both contemporaries of each other, John Nava and Bob Nugent. And they were taught by Warshaw. And Bob Nugent, who does these organic objects from the um, Amazon, taught me, <laughs> James Kleckner. So I wanted to pass this along, that there's this history. Uh, basically, LeBrun taught Warshaw, Warshaw taught Nugent, and Nugent taught myself, and I am passed this along down to you and, and my work. Um, I, again, I, I thought I knew how to draw until I learned this cage volume technique uh, really opened up my, my drawing. And just, it's a really excellent uh, perception skill technique to try and explore and really work with. Um, eventually, we're gonna draw tools with cage volume. So um, here's some tools from Jim Dine just to show you some really cool tools. Again, you can, uh, I'll have this PDF online so you'll be able to, um, on Canvas, you'll be able to go through it a little slower if you like. The student work here, this is uh, the first assignment we're gonna do with Cage Volume, which is essentially drawing a, a tack. So you need a little plastic tack. You can, uh, most people can have at home uh, any kind of tack, and you basically draw it in different angles. And um, you can add some cross-hatching little lines to give it some emphasis, but it's a very simple form, it's very transparent. And then eventually we'll do tools. Here's the student work of tool drawings. Now, uh, I'm not expecting people to, uh, at home, have ink washed necessarily, so you can do it with just uh, pen ink if you want, with cross-hatching, or you can do it with pencil. But here's the uh, tax drawing assignment, so you're gonna draw 10 or more with cage volume in your sketchbook. And the process, you draw a continuous line without lifting up your pen or pencil. Draw slowly, observe the form carefully. Imagine you've ever seen the object before. So this is where I give the analogy of like thinking of yourself as an alien from another planet or a little ant crawling around the object is that you've never seen. It's sort of new and um, never been described before, essentially. Then you can add value through cross-hatching to enhance the form or to add contrast. But draw what you see, but what also need to be true, meaning that you actually rotate the object. That's why the tack's really good you can fit in your hand and kind of rotate around. So here's uh, another example of some tacks. So I'll just do 10 of those. The other thing you're gonna do is, you're gonna do actually uh, the tools. So I'm gonna show you this slide here real quick. And the thing about tools to think about is the planes of the tools. So uh, I like to show this X, Y, and Z axis. Uh, in 3D world, you really notice this X, Y, and Z here. And it's, it's, uh, it's very essential to drawing. Um, here's some different simple sort of geometric forms that have different planes. You can associate those planes to things like faces, uh, hands, you know, objects, whatever pretty much you want. And here's just various planes on the face and different poses. Here's cage volume of the tacks. So you take that knowledge of the tacks that you uh, did before and basically you can pass that along to other things like hands, for example. Here's some cage volume drawing of hands with ink wash. Um, but here's the tools. These are the tools you're actually gonna be drawing. And so you find uh, tools online, or if you, if you better yet, if you can have your own tools that you have, you can actually really draw the real tool in front of you. In my drawing class, I typically have a box of tools I kind of pull out. Obviously, since it's an online course, you're not gonna have access to that. So if you don't have any tools at home, what you can do is you can find photos but you wanna make sure you get the photo reference that you're working from that has sort of a three quarter view. You don't wanna have it look straight up and down like this where it's flat or, uh, or sideways flat. Um, you wanna avoid essentially drawing tools in this way, in this manner where it's a symbol of the tool. You want it to have dimension. You wanna show the actual planes. So in this example here, you can see the edge of the scissor here, right? And the edge of the handle, and the handle here, for example. So uh, with each tool, you're gonna draw each tool, spend about 10, 15 minutes, you could spend longer, 
but you essentially want to be very carefully observing the, the object. Uh, avoid drawing symbols of tools. So symbols, again, that's what we think the thing looks like. We're not really looking at the subject and we really want to look at it and draw very uh, carefully. Draw a continuous line, try not to lift up pin or pencil. Uh, you can work with pencil or you could work with pins with this uh, project. Either one's fine. Draw what you see, but also know it to be true. Add cross hatching other details and uh, draw 15 or more uh, tools. So you wanna, you wanna draw on a large sheet of paper. Uh, 18 by 24 is typically what we work with in the drawing class, but if you have like a, I don't know, 11 by 15 or, um, you know, something, something half that size, like 12 by, uh, 20 by, by 24, we could deal with that. Um, we have here, have the tools touch at least three edges of the paper. Uh, I'll kind of explain it in a sec, but you want them to touch the actual edge and then experiment with composition, how you overlap the forms. So in here, you can see in the top left corner, uh, a part of a wrench going off the edge here. Uh, top right corner, you can see a screwdriver going off the edge. So that's what I mean by touching the edges. So you want at least three edges. Here you can see tools going off the left, going off the right, going off the top, even off the bottom here. So it's actually touching all four edges. And this is done in pencil here. So you can see here you got cage volume going on and then you have some shading and some actual rendering. So you can do that with your tools. Here's a pen and ink version where you have the same idea uh, with the cage volume. In fact, this is what we do in the class. We draw with pen and ink with the tools. And um, I know not everyone's gonna have access to this, so you know you could work with the Sharpies or you could do pencil. I'm gonna leave that totally up to you guys on that. Just try and get the largest sheet of paper you can to, to draw with and um, you know layer 15 or more tools in there. So some of the tools are gonna be lighter you know, as you draw along. Some might get more hidden. Some will be like parts of the tools, maybe because you're touching three of the edges. So they go off the edge, right? And just have a fun and experiment with composition overall, okay? So that's basically what you're gonna do. You're gonna do these 10 tacks for the homework and then you're gonna, in your sketchbook, and then you're gonna do this page of tools in your, um, in your uh, large drawing, okay? So until next uh, time, uh, see you soon. Cheers.